France is facing an unprecedented heat wave and drought, and climate activists are protesting the water restriction exception on golf courses by filling in golf holes with cement. I'm Yasmin Khan with Rebel HQ, and Europe is currently facing an incredible heat wave and drought, which has already led to more than 230 square miles of forest being burned in France this year alone. For reference, that's a lot. As we're seeing play out in real time around the planet, global warming is a problem that feeds off of itself, with bad conditions compounding upon themselves and further worsening conditions. For instance, we know that global warming was largely brought on by excessive of carbon emissions in the atmosphere, which led to the planet overheating, which is leading to all of these insane weather and climate patterns we're seeing today, such as extreme heat and drought conditions. The heat and the droughts then lead to rampant forest fires, like the ones France is currently enduring. The fires release even more carbon emissions into the atmosphere, and then, once the smoke clears and the dust settles and the trees have burned, there are no trees left to absorb some of that excessive, freshly released carbon from the atmosphere and the cycle continues. According to reporting from France 24 and the EU's Copernicus Environment Observation Program, quote, French fires released nearly 1 million tons of carbon, equivalent to the annual emissions of 790,000 cars into the atmosphere from June to August 11th alone. Of course, experts warn that something must be done to reduce carbon emissions on a large and meaningful scale, lest the fires continue to worsen year over year, destroying lives and ecosystems. Now, if there's anyone out there who's still denying the effects that the overconsumption of fossil fuels has had on the environment, they must really be trying to not see what's in front of them. This is established science, it's not a conspiracy. We knew these would be the consequences of our actions over a century ago, and we did nothing to rein ourselves in. Now we're living through said consequences while making meager efforts to reverse the damage that we've already done. Now Europe is dealing with a historic drought. Almost all of France is now under some level of water restrictions. Water bans are hitting businesses and citizens alike. But golf courses in the country are staying green. In worst hit areas, residents cannot water their gardens. They can't even wash their cars. But golf course owners can water the golf course. But even with things as dire as they are in France, the elite are still insulated from bearing the brunt of the burn for reasons one can only assume are rooted in capitalism. Now, in response to this unprecedented drought, water restrictions have been enacted across the country as 100 villages face drinking water shortages. However, despite actual people not having enough water to drink, a notable exception to the water restrictions is being made for golf greens because thirsty people got a golf. In response, the climate activist group Extinction Rebellion blocked golf holes on two French golf courses with cement, rendering the courses ungolfable. The exception is rooted in a 2019 agreement between the French Golf Federation and the Ministry of Ecological Transition. Golf course owners insist that they take steps to ensure golf greens are watered conservatively and with water that isn't fit for human consumption anyway. But officials concede that there is still ample progress to be made as far as implementing more sustainable watering practices from sustainable water sources. Furthermore, there's an obvious economic lean to this story. Maximilian Lambert, environmental project manager at the French Golf Federation, explains, quote, failure to have watering results in the death of the green, which leads to a closure of the structure and an operating loss for six months until the spring of the following year. The sector that we defend represents more than 1.5 billion euros in turnover in France and provides 15,000 jobs, including 7,500 direct jobs in the field. As for the pro side of this argument, Gerard Rougier of the French Golf Federation stated, quote, a golf course without a green is like an ice rink without ice. And honestly, who, who cares? Ice skating, like golfing, is not a necessity for life. When people are sacrificing drinking water and water for their crops, plants, and animals, they're not worried about going golfing or ice skating. They've got bigger problems. And it's not just the activists who are upset about the golf course exemptions. One French mayor tweeted that the practices of the richest continue to be protected. And I actually live on a golf course and I don't get it. Golf never appealed to me, and part of me, a 
big part of me, if I'm being honest, resents the tracts of land that have been rendered unusable and inaccessible by all but a select few who pay for access to grass. It already feels elitist and wasteful, but sure, you can make an argument for private property if you really wanted to, whatever. Still, the PR case for golf and golf courses is not made better when golf greens are allowed to thrive in drought conditions when everyone but the most privileged are asked or mandated to make concessions and sacrifices. Now, most of us are doing what we can to make things better for everyone. It's the few who refuse to compromise and refuse to sacrifice that makes things worse for the rest of us. And while it's insensible to blame someone drinking from a plastic straw for the proliferation of plastics on Earth, rather than blaming the petrochemical companies that insist on producing the straws in the first place, this is a community effort on a smaller scale. On a smaller scale, golf greens are consuming more than their fair share of our most vital resource. The economic impacts of the greens turning brown are still being prioritized over the well-being of the people and the land and by extension the planet. While I promise I don't look for the detriments of unchecked capitalism and unsustainable growth everywhere, stories like this one are hard to ignore. Now, Jean Pascal Van Ypresel, the former vice president of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, explained, quote, If we don't fundamentally change the way the system works, which too often focuses on short-term profit without regard to the long-term consequences of the decisions that are taken, then unfortunately, the environment and the climate in particular will be affected. All right. And that's it for me. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you got something out of this. And please be sure to follow me over on Instagram and TikTok.